During spring break, we took a team uh, from the awakening to the city of Nashville to work with FWO on one of their average campuses. I think the greatest impact of the team was not necessarily the work load, but the love load that they share with the people. You could see college students from you know, nice backgrounds and a pretty well-off family just loving and caring and hugging and talking to somebody that lived right underneath the bridge with nothing but their clothes and a few possessions. I could tell you thousands of stories, but perhaps one that struck me the most is the story of Larissa and Dimitri. Larissa was a very successful college professor in Siberia. Uh, after divo divorcing her husband, uh, she found out that her son had brain cancer. Couldn't be treated in Russia, so they come to Nashville to seek the medical treatment. The problem is that after the surgery, uh, Dimitri was basically paralyzed from the head down and also his comprehensive skills were seriously damaged. He couldn't communicate, he couldn't understand, and when he started getting treatment, the doctors told Larissa, you have to bring him every single day but Saturdays to seek treatment. While we're having our outreach and we're doing our operating service, we have some moon bounces and we have games and we're doing some dramas and we're passing out hot dogs and stuff like that. And in the middle of the outreach, we see this lady come down with a little kid in a wheelchair. That was Dimitri. And as Dimitri is looking around and seeing the kids playing and the dramas and, and everything, he's just going crazy about the moon bounce. He wants to get in that moon bounce and just jump with little kids. The problem is he has very little uh, motion skills. He can't really move. He can't jump. And we have 20 other kids bouncing off the walls inside that place. It's not the safest thing for him. The mom comes and is like, D don't worry about it. You, you don't have to, you know, it it's okay if Dimitri can go in. The thing is, we're seeing the child just going crazy to go into a moon band. So we have the crazy idea of getting one of our guys to pick him up, get in the moon bounce with him on his arms, and just put two girls, one on each side, to knock off the kids that are bouncing around Dimitri. And the thing is, Quinn, uh, the guy from our team, is just jumping with Dimitri in his arms, and the kids are knocking kids off, and just Dimitri is having the time of his life. He's laughing, giggling, trying to touch the other kids. And while that's happening, Larissa, his mom, right by the side of the moon bells, is just crying and bawling her eyes out. And she goes and says, well, Max, the thing is, for the first time, my little boy, is just another little boy. For the first time, my son is just playing with my neighbor's kids. Just look at him, laughing, enjoying, having a great time. Right there, Larissa comes and tells us that she wants to receive Jesus in her heart. Not because of a great message, not because of a powerful service, just because a group of college students went on there and loved her and loved her kids and we're willing to make a difference in her life right there. I think that's the power of a mission trip or a short-term trip. They get a chance and an opportunity to go and just love on them. Do what Christ did. Walk the streets with them, play with them, hug on them, share their meals, share their time, share your life with them. And as you become a part of their life, they get to see and become also a part of Christ's life, which is love incarnated in a person. I think that's the difference of the gospel. I think that's the power of a short-term trip. And that's what the awakening strives to do, to bring that love and to bring compassion and to bring the reality of the gospel to people's life. This time it was in Nashville. The next time it could be in your neighborhood. It could be in my neighborhood. Why? Because we're all commanded to go and love like Christ loved us first.